Day program with Sharon Douglas, Verna Felton, Dink Trout, John Brown, Joe Kern, Lee Benadaris, Jerry Hausner, Charles Stanton, and the orchestra, and starring the popular young singer of the Jack Benny Show in a day in the life of Dennis Day. And now here's Dennis singing. Take care. Take care when you say take care. Your lips may impart sweeter things than your heart means to say. Take care when you say take care all. Don't whisper tonight words that fade in the light of the day. Who knows it's a spell we're under. We'll still be a strong man. The moon is no longer there. Our heart has waited a moment such as this may be betrayed by the madness of a kiss when you say take care. Yes, that was the beautiful voice of Dennis Day. But exactly what sort of person is our hero? Well, suppose we ask some of the folks of Weaverville where Dennis lives and works. They know him best. For example, there's his boss, Mr. Willoughby, who owns the drugstore where Dennis jerks sodas. Uh, Mr. Willoughby, how do you feel about Dennis? Dennis Day? Well, when I first met Dennis and hired him to work behind my fountain, I wasn't sure whether he was a soda jerk or not. But I knew he was some kind... Mm, yeah. <laughs> now, how about a few words from Mildred, Dennis's girlfriend? I think Dennis is a perfect love. It's just that no one understands him. People in this town judge other people by how much money they have or how many brains. Either way, it's very unfair to Dennis. <laughs> All right, suppose we hear from Mildred's mother now, Mrs. Anderson, who runs the boarding house in which Dennis lives. Dennis say he will never amount to anything. He has no ambition, no gumption, and very little sense. My daughter thinks she's in love with him, but it's only because he reminds her of her father. Well, uh, uh, Mr. Anderson, what do you say to that? Any opinions expressed by me on any subject whatsoever are necessarily those of my wife. <laughs> well, how about a fellow boarder at the Anderson Menage? Uh, Mr. Snedeker, how do you feel about Dennis Day? Don't mention Dennis Day's name to me. I ought to tear him limb from limb. Wants to borrow my car, he says, so he can drive his girlfriend Mildred over to pick up her costume for the masquerade party tonight. Why did I give it to him? Because I'm a big, fat, good-natured slob, that's why. <laughs> and what happened? What happened to my car? I'll tell you what happened. Oh, oh Dennis! Did you see that? That parked car ran right into me. Golly, it's going to cost me $25 for Mr. Snedeker's fender, Mildred. Where am I going to get $25? 
Well, haven't you saved any money out of your salary at the drugstore? I've only had the job two days. Anyhow, with taxes what what they are, I couldn't possibly save more than six dollars a week. Well, how much is your salary? Six dollars a week. <laughs> well, we've just got to think of something. If Mr. Snedeker tells Mama she's liable to throw you out of her boarding house, and I don't know where you'd get another room with this housing shortage. Gee, I'd hate to lose that comfortable room I share with Mr. Appling, Mr. Moore, Mr. Ryan, Mr. Taylor, Mr. Greenberg, Mr. Erickson, Mr. Kerrigan, Mr. Calfleisch, and the Cooper brothers. <laughs> Especially this week when it's my turn to sleep in the bed. Well, we just got to raise the money somehow. Mr. Snedeker said if he didn't get it, $25, he'd murder you. Oh, yeah? I'd just like to see him try it, that's all. What would you do? What could I do? I'd be dead. <laughs> But the police would do plenty. Dennis, if you don't mind, I'd rather he got his money. Oh, if I could only win the prize at the masquerade tonight. Huh? You know, the silver cup for the most outstanding costume. Oh, we could get $25 for it easily. Well, gosh, maybe you will win, Mildred. Oh, not having a chance. Mama picked out a perfect stinker of a costume for me. Betsy Ross. Now I ask you, Betsy Ross. That does stink a little. <laughs> Gee, I just finished a book about a girl who'd make a wonderful character at a masquerade. A somewhat different type from Betsy Ross, of course. Oh, what book was that? It was called Forever Amber. <laughs> Forever Amber? Yes, it's a very absorbing book. It took me months and months to get through it, but I finally finished it. Well, why did it take you so long? I kept going back over it to see if I'd read right. <laughs> Very educational reading. You know, Mildred, it's very educational reading for a young fellow like myself, though. Believe me, I learned plenty about the London fire. <laughs> Golly, you know, I'll bet Amber would win that cup in a walk. Dennis, I'll do it. You mean you'll go to the masquerade as Amber? Exactly. Gee, you're liable to catch an awful cold. <laughs> Don't be silly. Now, what can I do with that costume? Cut out the sleeves. Lower the neckline. Make it slinky and tight-fitting. I don't think Betsy Ross would like this. <laughs> oh, gee, Dennis, I'm sure it can be done. Look, I'll go right to work on the costume. Oh, but there's some other things I'll need, and you'll have to get them for me. Okay. Now, let's see. I'll need a tiara for my hair, uh -huh. earrings, mm -hmm. a pair of black lace step-ins, some exotic perfume. Ooh, what you said. Exotic perfume? No, the one before that. <laughs> now, look, you can get everything in the same place. There's a little shop on Elm Street called Yvette of Paris. Ask for Mademoiselle Yvette herself and tell her what you want. You think she'll believe me? Well, tell her that for me. She knows my size and everything. Remember, Mademoiselle Yvette. Now, hurry. Hello. Hello. Could I see Mademoiselle Yvette of Paris, please? You're talking to the Mademoiselle in person already. You're Mademoiselle Yvette? But we. Oui. <laughs> Something I could do for the monsieur yet. Gee, you have the most peculiar accent. <laughs> what part of France are you from? <laughs> France, he says. <laughs> Mademoiselle Yvette is just the name on the door. Then you're not really from Paris? Listen, the last time I saw Paris, it was holding up my husband's socks. <laughs> now, is there something I could do for you? Well, yes, there is. Mildred Anderson asked me to get some things for us. A tiara for her hair, a pair of earrings, some exotic perfume. Yeah. And a pair of black lace. Black lace. Uh, what's the matter, you bashful? Yeah. <laughs> you mean a pair of these? Oh, put him down! Put him down! <laughs> so, so what's the matter? Why are you getting excited? There's nobody in them. <laughs> No, but I got a vivid imagination. <laughs> anyway, she doesn't want that kind. She wants black lace. Black lace, huh? Is black lace becoming already in Weaverville, um, de rigueur? De rigueur? Uh, it's a little thing I picked up from Charles Boyer. It means stylish. Oh, <laughs> I see. You pick up little things from Charles Boyer, huh? All the time. <laughs> it should happen to my husband. <laughs> Okay, anything else? No, that's all. All right, I'll wrap everything up together. I'll be back in one minute. Gee, these pink ones are kind of cute. I wonder if... No. Still, they might. I'll ask Mademoiselle Yvette. 
No, it's ridiculous. I'm sure they don't make them for men. <laughs> That'll be eleven dollars and uh, fifty cents. Eleven dollars and oh my goodness! I'm afraid you'll have to charge it. Charge it? Who to? Why to Mrs. Anderson, Mildred's mother. She's a customer of yours, isn't she? Uh, yeah. I guess it'll be all right. Here. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hmm. I wonder. Hello, Mrs. Anderson. This is Yvette of Paris. Look, I've... Uh, I, uh, Yvette of Paris. Yvette of... Rena Fine Schreiber, who makes for you the corsets. <laughs> A young man was just here who bought for your daughter some very fancy schmancy underwear. And I was wondering... I saw you standing in the sun and you were something to see. I know what I like and I like what I saw. And I said to myself... Hello, Mrs. Anderson. Good evening, Dennis. It may interest you to know that I just had a phone call from Mademoiselle Yvette. Oh, really? I have also had a little talk with my uh, daughter, Mildred. Oh, really? I found out she intended going to tonight's masquerade dressed as a certain brazen husband. Oh, really? She is not going to the masquerade at all. I've locked her in her room. Oh. Dennis, if you say, oh, really again, I shall... Queen. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. Oh, really? I also found out that the idea of going as this Amber came from you. Oh, no, ma'am. I just happened to mention the Nevertheless, Dennis, Mildred... Mr. Anderson and I feel it's about time someone had a serious talk with you. Normally, of course, that's the duty of the head of the family. Yes, ma'am. But my husband has offered to do it instead. Yes, ma'am. i leave. And you two may talk this over, man to... Uh, boy... Well, whatever the two of you are, talk it over. Good evening, Dennis. Oh, hello, Mr. Anderson. I didn't see you sitting there. I guess your wife had you blocked off. Uh, been that way for 22 years. My wife is pretty excited about Mildred wanting to go to the party as Amber, Dennis. Yes, sir. Mrs. Anderson never let me read Forever Amber. She said it was no book for a man with funny ideas in his head. <laughs> Oh, have you got funny ideas in your head? No, but she said I would have if I read it. That's silly. I read it, and I haven't got any idea of any kind in my head. No. This, uh, uh, Amber Dennis, what sort of a girl is she? Oh, you know, companionable, good mixer, makes friends easily. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I understand she's quite friendly. Oh, well. <clears throat> yes, sir. But we certainly don't want Mildred pretending she's such a character, even for a masquerade, do we, Dennis? No, sir. We want Mildred to grow up the kind of a woman that her mother is, don't we? No, sir. I say we want Mildred to grow up the kind of a woman her mother is, don't we? No, sir. You know, no, Dennis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> Mrs. Anderson undoubtedly has many good qualities, but she does boss you around quite a bit. Now, Dennis... Some do it quietly and sweetly. Some, like my wife, do it loudly and firmly. But they all boss you around. Golly, maybe the world would be better off if there weren't any women, just men and children. <laughs> what a beautiful thought. Well, I hope you've gotten something out of this little talk, Dennis. Yes, sir, I have. I know I have. I'm going to read that forever, Amber, if it takes me the next ten years. And if it's what I think it is, who cares? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I'll be getting back to Mademoiselle Yvette with this stuff. We won't need it now. Bye, Mr. Anderson. Bye, Dennis. Janet. Huh? Janet, over here. Mildred. Quick, climb through the window and don't let Mama see you. But what? Hurry and hand me that box. Here. Easy. Uh. Uh, you uh, heard what Mama said about the party, huh? Yeah. She won't let you go. I know. She took one look at women and nearly fainted. Gosh, you did make it kind of daring. 
Well, I guess we'll never get that $25 now. And why not? This cup is for the most outstanding costume, isn't it? Isn't this costume outstanding? Yes, but there's no one to wear it. Oh, yes, there is. Well, what do you intend to... Oh. Oh, no. No, Mildred, don't look at me like that. Oh, Dennis, don't be that way. You'll make a beautiful amber. <laughs> but how can I be a girl? Girls are built differently than I am. I'm taller. <laughs> Notice that. I guarantee that in this dress and wig, no one will be able to tell you from Amber. I bet I could never fool Charles the first. <laughs> no, Mildred, I won't do it. Dennis, think of Mr. Snedeker's fender. Think of the $25. Think of the housing shortage. All I can think of is black lace. Black lace. Uh, there, step in. It isn't how I get in, it's how I feel after I'm there. <laughs> All right, Dennis. I guess I shouldn't have asked you. Mildred, I... I thought I meant something to you. I thought you'd do it for my sake. I was wrong. <laughs> oh, Mildred, stop. I can't stand seeing anyone cry. You don't care if Mama throws you out of the house and we never see each other again. You don't care. <laughs> Mildred, I can't stand here and see a woman cry like that. There's only one thing I can do. Yes? I'm going to get out of here. Yes, <laughs> You come back here. We're going to win that cup and pay off Mr. Snedeker. Now, go in the bathroom and get those clothes off. But, Mildred... Here, take all this and put it on. And when you come out, I'll fix your makeup. You mean I... I have to put all this on? Yes. Mildred, I read another book once about a wonderful character named Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> all I need is a beard and a short pair of stilts, and I'm sure that... Get I... into that bathroom. Yes, ma'am. Gee, my mother always wanted a girl, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Well, I finally got the costume on, Mildred. How do I look? Uh, well, let's see. It's not too bad, except you're a little lumpy in the wrong places. <laughs> Walk toward me and, uh, and slink like Andrew. I'm afraid to. This dress is too tight. One slink and I'm slunk. <laughs> well, it is tight. Didn't you put on that girdle I gave you? No. Why not? I couldn't get it over my head. <laughs> oh, Dennis, they don't go over your head. Don't you know how to put on a girdle? I'm afraid not. I've spent most of my life as a boy. <laughs> but what on earth makes you look so lumpy from your hips down? Oh, that's my long underwear. You didn't take that off? You think I want to catch cold? There's a terrible draft through this thing. <laughs> Dennis, you didn't have to keep your flannels on. I gave you those black lace step-ins to wear. I know, but I stepped into them wrong. They're black lace kilts now. <laughs> Still now, I'm going to put on your makeup. Okay. First, a little mascara. There we are. Now, some powder. Hey! <laughs> Watch where you put that stuff. You're supposed to keep your mouth closed. Golly, if men were girls, we'd never bother with all this stuff. If men were girls, we wouldn't either. <laughs> now, now, look at it. Hold still while I put on your lipstick and we're all set. There we are. How am I? Why, Dennis, you're absolutely ravishing. Honestly, you're gorgeous. Gee, really? Uh, just go over and take a look in that mirror. Okay. Pardon me, miss. Would you mind stepping aside? Oh, that's me. <laughs> of course it is. Well? Gee, I am kind of desirable. <laughs> oh, Dennis, I just know you're going to win that prize. Oh, now, look, we haven't much time. Here's the keys to my father's car. Slip out the window the same way you got in. You'll have to boost me up. I don't dare bend over in this dress. All right. Oh, oh I do hope you win, Dennis. <clears throat> there. And please, please be careful of Daddy's car. I will, Mildred. Gee, I did look like an awfully cute girl in that mirror. Not my type, of course, but some men like them. Oh, golly, here comes a man. Here's my chance to find out how I look. I'll drop my handkerchief and see what happens. Oh, uh, pardon me. Did you drop this handkerchief? Why, yes. How careless of me. <laughs> well, here you are. Oh, thank you, sir. You're really too, too kind. Oh, that's okay. Oh, say, by the way. Yes? You got a match, buddy? Hello, 
Mr. Willoughby. Hello, Dennis. I, oh, oh, I beg your pardon, miss. When I heard your voice, I thought you were a boy who works for me. I do. I'm Dennis. Well, by George. I'd certainly never know you in that dress and with a mask on. Say, uh, who are you supposed to be, Dennis? I'm Amber. You know, the book, Forever Amber. Oh. I may have read it. It, it sort of escapes my memory. Then you didn't read it. <laughs> Say, Mr. Willoughby, when do the judges uh, judge the costumes? It's ten o'clock, and i got to get out of here before I get that five o'clock shadow. Huh? Twice. Oh. <laughs> well, the man who's judging the costumes hasn't arrived yet, and by George, I wish he'd get here. If he... There's someone coming in the door now, Mr. Willoughby. Oh, oh, yes, good, that's him, and high time, too. I, uh... Oh, my goodness. Something wrong, Dennis? The judge of the costumes. It's Mr. Snedeker. That's right, he's coming over here now. Mr. Willoughby, I can't stay here. If he sees me, he'll punch me right in my mascara. Oh, he won't recognize you in that outfit any more than I did. But my voice... I'll tell him you're a foreigner. Speak to him in Spanish. I don't know a word in Spanish. Neither does he, you're perfectly safe. Oh, uh, Mr. Snedeker, right over here, please. Oh, sorry to be late, Willoughby. That imbecile who works for you wrecked my car, and I had a devil of a time getting a taxi. If I ever get my hands on that young, uh... Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> what have we here? Uh-oh. Uh, Mr. Snedeker, may I present uh, Senorita Lolita Del Rio? The Senorita just got here from Chile. Oh, well, I'm delighted, Senorita. Delighted. Hacienda, Senor. <laughs> Well, now, if you two will excuse me, I, uh, I have a great many things to attend to. Oh, no, don't leave us, Senor Willoughby. I'm afraid I must. Adios. But, Senor Willoughby... Oh, let him go. Uh, much cozier with just the two of us. Mmm, senorita. Oh, tico, tico, senor. <laughs> well, well, so you're from Chile. You don't look very chilly to me. <laughs> uh... I'll bet you're a dream, all right, underneath that mask. How about a peek, huh? Oh, no, senor. Oh, come on, a teensy-weensy little peek. No, senor, not until the price for the winning costume has been giving out. Oh, I see what you mean, my little enchilada. I thought you would, my great big cucamonga. <laughs> Speaking as the official judge, I think your costume has an excellent chance. Oh, thank you, senor. Yes, an excellent chance. Uh, are you married, senorita? No. Uh, neither am I. You know what I mean? See, si, but I doubt if anything will come of it. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know. I waited a long time for the right girl to come along. Who can say I'm not looking into her eyes right now? Me. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to award the trophy for tonight's outstanding costume. That is, if our judge, Mr. Snedeker, has a winner picked out. I sure have, eh, my little beauty? Oh, Senor Snedeker. <laughs> uh, folks, folks, your attention, please. <clears throat> now, after a careful study of every costume here tonight, I take pleasure in awarding this beautiful silver cup to the little lady on my left. Oh, uh, what was that name again, Senorita? Dennis Day. Senorita Dennis Day. <laughs> Well, my little tamale, are you satisfied now? You can take this lovely silver cup back to... Uh, Senorita who? Dennis Day. You! What? Why, you are... Uh, Mr. Snedeker, please! Calm down. Don't get excited. Don't get excited? Why, I as good as propose to you. It's all right. I didn't accept. Didn't accept? <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Snedeker, if you'd like to withdraw your offer of marriage now, believe me, I'll understand. Why? Let me at him! Let me at him! Mr. Snedeker, Let please! Let me at him! Dennis Day returns to sing the beautiful ballad all through the day. I sit alone in the golden daylight But all I see is a silver sky for in my fancy I sweep away light And keep my image of the sky Just the way we like it You and I All through the day 
I dream about a night. I dream about a night here with you. All through the day, I wish away the time until the time. with us next week for another in the series of Dennis Day programs. More songs, more adventures in the life of our star, Dennis Day, who'll be back when you hear... Oh, that makes life be worthwhile Well, then your eyes And the spell of your Good morning speaking, this is the Columbia Broadcasting System.